there. Good morning. How's your week going? Let me know if you're watching this on the replay. Share some wins with me. Share uh, possibly what you're struggling with. Uh, let me know how I can help in any way. I am trying, Facebook has some new functions here when I go live about cross promoting. So I'm trying some things and we will see how it goes. Let me know. Um, Today specifically, we're going to talk about overcoming being nervous or anxious before teaching, right? Or leading a private session or a group or a workshop, whatever it may, may be that you do, a class, right? Have you ever experienced this feeling like really nervous or anxious before you're about to do something? Work with someone, uh, lead a class. If you're watching this on the replay, let me know. <clears throat> I've been there for sure and even still now to this day sometimes before I do a Facebook live here with you I get a little bit nervous right or especially like in a couple weeks I am teaching yoga to at a Lynch syndrome conference so I'm teaching to an entirely new group of people uh, that I haven't talked to ever before it's for a conference um, so you know professional and outside the studio. Uh, so yeah, I get a little nervous before doing that, but yet I'm able to show up and do it. Now, I'm not saying doing it perfectly or always uh, excelling at it, but I do it and I learn. And let me show you how I actually get through this process because if I don't, or if you're not teaching or for example, I have a free workshop coming up in a couple weeks. You can sign up. It's on how to create and fill workshops. And you might be thinking, well, that free workshop, it sounds nice, but it's not for me right now because I'm, I can't even imagine teaching a workshop. Like, what would I teach? I'm too nervous. I'm too nervous to even teach like a class or a private session. Like, I can't get up in front of a group of people. I, I don't even know what I would say or all those things. If you're thinking anything like that, then this workshop is for you. I promise you'll get benefit for showing up to this free workshop or catching it on the replay if that works better for you. Um, even if you don't plan on teaching a workshop right now because it's information that you can use for the future and it'll help you uh, get more confident in teaching your classes, your private sessions, whatever you're doing right now. If you're leading a group program, um, it'll help you get more confident in showing up for those people for whatever you're doing right now. Now, if you do get nervous or anxious before you do any of that, I want to tell you it's normal. There's no reason to beat yourself up or shame yourself because of this. It's part of the human experience. Our brains are wired for survival, which means that they're wired to scan and look for danger. And if you're doing anything new, if you're doing anything a little bit scary, like for some of you teaching a group class, teaching in front of a group of people is a scary and dangerous thing. Your brain perceives it that way. For some people, um, doing private sessions and making sure that your client or studio, uh, student can get results, your brain can interpret that as a dangerous thing, right? It's all in how your brain perceives what's going to keep you alive, which is a lot of the time doing the same old, same old, because your brain knows it can um, knows what's to be expected. You know the outcome of that. So doing new things, sometimes your brain perceives as dangerous. And so sometimes just knowing this, sometimes just knowing like, hey, I'm gonna teach a group of people or do this new fee thing or have my first private session with this new client and they're pretty complex and it's a bit tricky sometimes it's just helpful to know like hey thank you brain like you're feeling really nervous and anxious like thank you brain thanks for looking out for me and having my back of like 
you know, trying to support me, but you know, I don't need your fears and worries right now. So sometimes just knowing that we're wired for toward, you know, it's almost skewed towards being fearful or worried or anxious or any uh, having doubt, any of those things, then we can catch it a bit easier and we can say, hey, thanks, thanks nervous system, thanks brain for looking out, but like I've got this and showing how you have this. So uh, one way, there's a few ways really to bolster your nervous system and begin to show your brain that you know, teaching group classes, yoga classes, workshops, private sessions, it's not a dangerous thing, is to improve your capacity to handle new things with greater ease and greater flow. And that's a lot of what I teach in the mastermind because a lot of marketing, scaling, getting new clients, all those things, selling, uh, which we all have to do if we're a business owner, involves working with our nervous system. And it's not taught this way because, you know, we're from like a patriarchal kind of CEO, male dominated, a lot of the times industries. And really working with our nervous system has a feminine energy to it. And yet it can be so powerful and so helpful. So I really work on this a lot in the mastermind but there's certain techniques and strategies that you can do in the moment as well. And that's what I'll teach you right now. So as I mentioned in the very beginning of this video, like even now to this day, I sometimes get really nervous or anxious if I'm going to teach something. And as I mentioned, I have the Lynch syndrome conference where I'm going to teach yoga to um, patients and, and clients with Lynch syndrome in Columbus, Ohio, um, just in a few weeks and this is really what I'm gonna do to set myself up for success as much as possible uh, for the event. Obviously I can't guarantee you if I stumble on my words or if I trip and fall on my face, done that, been there, I've definitely fallen before in front of a group of people. Um, <laughs> but you know sometimes if you just go out and have fun it really doesn't matter how imperfect you are and you just show up in your humanness, right? But really what helps to ground me into confidence is um, journaling out what I will teach. So in the yoga world, this, you know, we call this sequencing. So you can write out your sequence. So literally, I will write out the sequence that I'm gonna teach for the class of the physical asana. If I'm leading uh, a Facebook Live or something that's more of a lecture style, or interactive style and if you can relate to any of this just comment below i love to hear feedback speaking of interactions sometimes i forget uh you know because i'm not seeing any comments here but um in the moment so even on a replay you can comment on it but i will sequence out what i will teach essentially some bullet points and so at this lynch syndrome conference for sure, we're going to be doing some physical asana or a yoga flow, whatever you want to call it, slow style, therapeutic style. But also there's some great messages of yoga philosophy, of coaching, of wellness that I'm going to be sprinkling in throughout the class because personally, that's what really helps me as someone with Lynch get through my scans. Like, And you hear this because you see, see it on my social media posts of like how I'm handling just yesterday, I had a CT scan. And so now I'm in waiting mode to get the results and tomorrow I meet with my oncologist. So this to develop a plan. And so really this is the work and that's another lesson is like, it's the sequencing of like physical tactics. So in, in this circumstance, it's, uh, the actual physical asanas that they can now practice at home later, and as well as the philosophies and concepts and messages that I wanna share, and it's all authentic to me. And I think that's what really helps me to deliver them with confidence, and yes, I might still be a little bit nervous, and they might hear that in my voice, but I'm able to deliver the message with what people tell me with power or inspiration or motivation is because I actually live it. 
right? I actually integrate it into my body and it's from my own unique experiences that I'm delivering these messages. So yes, it's concepts, it's philosophies, it's messages I've learned from people combination, in combination with what I've learned and experienced in life. And then it comes together and I deliver it to you. It's exactly what I'm doing right here. And for me to get all that so it's not like a conjumbled mess in my brain where I might get confused while I'm actually teaching, I've got to write it out. So for me, that's how I do it. I write out the sequence, I write out the message, and then I make a flow together. And I also journal out, okay, what are my fears? What might be the worst case scenario? So it, for this conference, I might show up and um, we're teaching it outside and maybe the weather isn't conducive to being outdoors. Or maybe there's people gawking at us and I have even more eyes on me than I even anticipated. What will I do then, right? That could put you into a freeze response in your nervous system. Your brain could be like, danger, danger, right? So I'm gonna mentally prepare for that. What, what happens if people are just watching us? I might wave to them and say, hey, join in if you want. Like, let's have some fun. It's a party, the more the merrier, you know? So I might mentally prepare for myself for that sort of thing. What happens if uh, someone says, oh, I can't lay on my back right now. Like, I might have some modifications for them. Uh, what happens if I'm not getting the feedback or in the engagement I truly desire? Like what happens if they're just staring at me with a, a blank look on their face or doubt or confusion? How can I say it in another way? So I'm going to have different scenarios that I'm going to write out for myself. And yes, I'm going to plan for worst case scenario. The difference is I'm not getting sucked into worst case scenario in a victim mentality being like, okay, I'm trapped. There's nothing I can do. The world's out to get me sort of thing. No, it's planning for the worst case scenario with solutions so that way I can confidently and nimbly handle or flow with whatever curveball life might throw, decide to throw at me. And at the same time, also planning for success. Like, okay, maybe it's gonna be awesome. Like maybe we're gonna show up outside it's going to be ideal weather people are going to be able to do the flow and enjoy it that's awesome but in the process of planning for this i've developed more skills to handle a variety of different situations so then let's say i get a request for a keynote speaking event at this other thing i can be like oh yeah, I kind of planned for this when I was planning for my Lynch syndrome. So now I've got this, right? I can speak to a bigger audience from there. And then the other thing that I do really is in the moment, um, I practice my breath work. And if you're not a yoga teacher or haven't had any experience really practicing pranayama, don't be like, oh, that's for, not for me. Hang on here because it can be very simple. In the moment when I feel my nervous system triggered into kind of a stress response, which is normal, if you're gonna do a big scary thing, right? It's just preparing for like being in the stress response. How can I be in the stress response and support myself in the moment and support myself afterwards so I can downregulate and process and get all that excess energy out and recalibrate my hormones and all the things. So in the moment, I do breath work and all I do is breathe through my nose. I take a deep inhale and sometimes I just breathe out through my mouth, which is not really taught, you know, in yoga, ideally really for breath work, we do it all through the nose. But sometimes for me, when I'm really stressed, I just take a deep inhale and I I sigh it out like a horse. And actually, there is um, a pranayama te technique. It's called the buzzing method, where it's like, mm, it's like a humming, which helps to release the throat, which is a great way to prepare to use your vocal cords and such. Now, I'm not a vocal teacher, and I could be teaching that all wrong because I, you know, I don't, that's not my specialty, but it's just what I do in the moment to calm myself down, and it really works. So, or, Sometimes if, there, if there's people around me and I don't want to be like sighing like a horse, like boom, <laughs> right? then uh, what I'll do is I'll just think long exhale, just breathe it out, like inhale, long exhale, let it go. 
and um, and that really for me helps to calm the nervous system and there's research supporting this that double the length of the exhale can really help to uh, work a, work with your nervous system down regulating a sympathetic response so dropping you back into more of a parasympathetic of course it's not gonna you know your nervous uh, your sympathetic is not going to turn completely off because you're you're in the moment right there is a sense of stress there but it's working with it so you can show up confidently and do whatever you have to do and then I just do it right so I do it with a little bit of fear in fact um, you can but it's not a, a graspy hustle type fear it's it's like okay accepting the reality that yeah I am a little afraid, I am a little nervous, but I've got this. And then afterwards, I do like, um, I just have a little alone time. So probably after I teach this, I will go to the hotel room because there's a break afterward. I've looked at the schedule and I can kind of just decompress and zone out, which might be watching a little TV. It might be reading a fiction book. It might just be there lying in the bed and uh, sinking into a, a nice soft comforter without you know my daughter around saying mama I need this or that so I will take that downtime before then I go back out and interact with the group and that's because I'm an introvert so how I replenish is by myself if you're an extrovert you might go right towards the next activity and be with that group and that might be replenishing for you only you can know that and sometimes it's trial and error to figure it out but that's personally what I do. And you can listen to the podcast episode. It's the, the mistake of doing it scared. I forget the exact title, but it talks more about how to do things with fear because it's just going to be there. Anxiety, right? When you're doing something new or scary, it's just going to be there sometimes or nervous system and how and if you're waiting for that to completely go away or you're waiting to feel a hundred percent confident then you're going to hold yourself back and you know what the world is going to miss out on your unique gifts and talents because people are just aren't going to hear what you have to say because you're not showing up to do it because you're scared so it doesn't serve your people because they don't get to experience it they don't get to learn from you it doesn't serve you because you might be missing out on opportunities to really grow your business so um, that's personally what I do you can watch this uh, Facebook live a few times take some notes um, and then uh, of course show up to the workshop even if you don't plan on teaching workshops right now in the near future this will help to plant some seeds that it is possible for you to teach and lead workshops even if you're really nervous right now just um, leading private sessions or classes or whatever. So um, I'll drop some links in the comments um, for the workshop and um, yes, awesome. Thank you, Alicia. Yeah, you use, use it in any way um, that's going to serve you best. And so it's so good to see you. And also, of course, if you do feel really stuck, you don't want to wait for the workshop, you can always um, sign up for a strategy call. I'm happy to help you in any way, uh, get a plan in place and point you in the right direction. And don't worry about showing up being a hot mess. I have people telling me that, well, Alison, you know, I'm so embarrassed to show, to tell you all that's really going on behind the scenes. Like, I don't have my stuff together at all. And that's okay. I'm not here to judge or criticize. Criticize, like I've got my own stuff. We all do, right? We're all human. My job is to just show up and hold the space and develop a plan for you. So no judgment at all. So um, see you in the workshop. See you on a call, or maybe on a podcast. Or next week, of course, I will be showing up with a new topic. I think next week. I am traveling next week to that conference. So. Uh, we'll see how the timing goes. Hopefully I can show up here live and uh, get a topic in uh, before I'm on the road. Yeah, the breathing thing is, um, I, you know, in the yoga world, it's I see it quite frequently, just take a deep breath, but sometimes it's in a very, uh, Alicia, it's in a very structured way, like you have to do it this way to get this result. And, you know, truthfully, if you're like really stressed out and nervous, I find that trying to force fit like some type of breath technique into a box um, 
it just added adds to more stress because then because then you're like well am i doing this right how come it's not working and in my experience for me it's just like sighing it out and just letting it flow in whatever way really resonates with you um to help just ground and connect and maybe over time yeah maybe doing it really structured will serve you or uh, some of you might say, yeah, the structured counting it out, inhale for three, exhale for six. Some people might really resonate. So I'm just giving um, all of you really just different techniques because what works for one person might work for not work for the other, <laughs> right? But yeah, the breathing thing in the moment for me is key. And truthfully, I use that. Um, yes. Totally, and yes, exactly, for people doing it in their second legion, yeah, for sure. Um, and, and truthfully, that's what I used um, when I was going, getting ready to do the needle biopsy uh, just the other week. I was really nervous, right? Who, who doesn't get really nervous if you think about a long needle that's going to be <laughs> put into your body? And so, you know, I do do it for presentations. Uh, for even before Facebook lives, before anything I do, uh, sometimes even before private sessions, if, if, if it's like a complex client or that sort of thing. Um, but even for my own health, um, when I'm going, like tomorrow I'm gonna meet with my oncologist and I'm not nervous that we're gonna do anything scary in, in the appointment, but I am a bit nervous to be like, okay, what's the plan gonna be like? I, I am a little nervous about that, so I'll do the, the breath technique when I'm in, in, in the waiting room, just waiting so I don't go in there like crazy frazzled and then um, I'm fried and exhausted for the rest of the day, you know. So that's how I support myself in both my business and my health. So um, thank you so much for sharing, Alicia. It's so good to see you. If you're watching this on the replay, you can just drop some comments. I would love to hear from you, and I will see you next week. All right. Bye for now.